Francis Bacon made a, a, a triptych that inspired me, and it's um, so it's some of the t- same topics. Uh, he also worked on the trial of Adolf Eichmann. So I wanted to make a, a version of it in a way, and uh, in in my uh, I the, the 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 references of. Uh, of the Jews and uh, the religion, uh, it's because I I also discovered in in my late life that my family is Jews Jewish. Uh, it's very strange because I've been working with the Palestinians and I always had this. I don't know. I've been I've been feeling like a restless soul in a way. Uh, I don't know where my roots is. Always trying to find out where my roots is and. Now it's starting to come up, you know, it's, uh, I have Jewish uh, family. So, um, so of course, it's interesting to, to, to now to, to see that this is something that I've been trying to explore or trying to deal with or find out and to make this kind of a collage. So it's like a collage, it's a triptychon, but it's also collage. Uh, about uh, evil, human evil, basically. That is what it's about. And uh, but what is evil? You know how how do a man? What makes him evil? Can you be was Adolf Eichmann uh, evil? I don't know. Uh, but you know. This this kind of organizing, making this kind of a system, and uh, I think I I, I never get uh, any reasonable uh, answers to any of these these uh, questions related to how humans behave underneath uh, a totalitarian uh, framework, which systematically kills uh, one specific kind of people within that framework or maybe two or three or those but not those and those are nice and and also being in a, 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 a Norwegian which which uh, the Nazis were looking upon as something what was you know the the highest form of uh, humans. They were going to make Norway into this breeding space for Aryan uh, humans, you know, like the perfect humans, the blonde uh, man, you know, the strong blonde man. And it's crazy ideas, so crazy. You know, she she uh, she wrote a book about uh, Adolf Eichmann, uh, or it it was the book is based upon her reports from uh, for New, the New York Times because she was present d- uh, during the the trial, and uh, of course it's it's uh, Hannah Arendt is some she's a big intellectual figure in in Jewish culture but she also questioned you know she she brought up many of the questions that we just discussed about uh, is this the personification of this kind of evil that systematically wants to kill all the Jews and how and how trying to understand and uh, so Hannah Arendt uh, is also someone that uh, was also critical towards the Israeli state uh, and there are so many paradoxes uh, related to to, uh, to the Jewish state which is a result of the Nazi regime you know, in a way uh, and because of the Holocaust uh, the, the, Isra- the Israeli state can also behave more or less like 
it does now because of the Holocaust. Because uh, they will call you uh, uh, anti-Semitic if you if you criticize them. So there there's there are so many paradoxes connected to uh, to this. And um, so, but so it's interesting to to bring her into the to the to the table of uh, all. It's like a chess chess table where 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 you have all these these uh, different pieces on the board and uh, uh, it's a never-ending chess piece uh, basically like you know you know uh, she was also playing with the chess piece in Duchamp and uh, I think it's a good uh, visual example of, uh, of of this game this international political game that just continuously uh, creates more and more uh, trouble and we we don't learn from it ever and it's just becoming worse and worse and worse unfortunately you can also relate it in a very um, aesthetical way but they have the visuality from the the Russian suprematism almost uh, so they are more like the aesthetics comes from uh, Russia almost the futuristic uh, the futuristic aesthetics or a combination of that and the Bauhaus uh, architecture aesthetics so it's you know the Zion this the protocol of Zion they came from Russia but uh, uh, the aesthetics of the paintings come from from Germany. So it's like this round uh, dance of aesthetics and stories, and from the Zion, the, the protocols of Zion to the Holocaust to the trial of Adolf Eichmann in Jerusalem and Hannah Arendt, and then my country my small contribution with building a small uh, institution that is like a free space for thinking actually it's very funny but you know this painting became into coffee bags okay so I'll, if you are you are you running yes. yeah so the the so the paradox the real paradox of of that painting we've been discussing now which is basically about human evil and uh, is that uh, this is where it ended up as this this it ended up as a design in uh, in coffee and tea bags on a very famous brand in Norway this is where it ended up in this is details from the painting so of course you can also look upon it as something which is uh, beautiful something which is really really horrible can turn into something nice and that's also a paradox but that's uh, that's that's where it ended up how do you feel about it it looks <laughs> it, it looks nice <laughs> It looks nice. Uh, it was very strange working with this because uh, when I was working with the Triptychon and uh, it was, you know, it's so serious, you know. Uh, I even printed out WikiLeaks, secret WikiLeaks documents and it's, it's still here somewhere. Uh, and, uh, and it ends up as a uh, design for, for coffee. Which like it's commodity and uh, drinking, so. But it's it's fun to be talking about it uh, now, this this many years after, and it has like a second life uh, in 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 the in the life as a coffee bag. <laughs> so the evil, the paradox. The totalitarianism uh, complex ended up as commodity in uh, coffee and tea bags. That's nice. It became pop art almost. Yeah. 
But you know, uh, talking about pop art, Andy Warhol also made a beautiful series about uh, like suicide, like death and things like this. So so uh, it just it just proves that art can end up in a different form that you didn't expect or plan or. But we can talk about it, you know. Why I went to North Korea is simultaneously while I was building up uh, the academy in Ramallah. An, another uh, artist, Norwegian artist uh, named Morten Trovik. Uh, he worked on a project called Miss Landmine in Cambodia. And uh, I always liked him and uh, had huge respect for, for his work. So once in a while he, he put me on a mailing list and uh, he sent out mails about what he was doing. And, I always try to respond to him and saying, yeah, go, you do great work and, you know, be like positive uh, uh, feedback on his work and telling him that I appreciated his work. And uh, suddenly just one day he uh, contacted me and uh, he said that, uh, that he was going to establish um, uh, a s small institution and uh, he wanted to have a board and he just wanted one board member and that was me so <laughs> suddenly I was in his board and I never met him but uh, when we when we finally met for the first time we we just bonded really like this and uh, we're like soulmates uh, and uh, uh, I was going through a very heavy divorce in 2014 and I just told him that, you know, I'm going through this divorce. Can we just do something in North Korea? I need to go there. Should we build an academy of fine arts there or something? Yeah, he said, let's do that. And then he, then he took me to uh, Pyongyang and he showed me all of North Korea. It was fantastic. Uh, it was huge adventure. I just fall in love with the country and the people there. So uh, that was my first encounter with uh, with North Korea. And uh, now we do the DMC Academy in hopefully in August and September, two thousand and seventeen. I think the immediate, the immediately uh, fascination, of course, is that uh, it's the closest experience of going to a different, to travel back in time, and maybe being on a different planet or something. It's like a, the, it's so isolated and it's so authentic. Uh, it's I I never experienced something as authentic as in uh, North Korea. Uh, you know, when you travel around the world, it's like it, you you get the same stuff basically everywhere, most of the places, especially in the in Europe and the States, and now lots in in the Middle East and Asia more and more so as well. Um, so it's like it's real it's more real I don't know it's difficult to uh, it's just presence the presence there uh, it's authentic it's not uh, but but then again you feel that you are part of this theater it's also a theater but it's authentic it's very like it's so it's so complex. It's so complex, uh, and it's like back in time and on different planet. And it's so many things at the same time. So uh, yeah, intense. <laughs> <laughs> 
but and it's beautiful there it's really beautiful i love the architecture this communist uh, architecture it's, it's the, i don't know if you've been to karl marx Allee in berlin it's like this everywhere parade streets you know it's made for having like parades in the streets big air is lots of air I think what happened with the uh, the the particle physics works uh, is that you know it it become very disciplined and very uh, concrete, uh, geometrical, uh, very clean cut. Um, because I was uh, working a lot with architecture, I was, I was, um, I started to work with real estate. Uh, so I bought this huge soap factory. And I turn it into a theater and a cafe and a studio spaces for all kinds of artists. And uh, we didn't use an, uh, an architect, so I was the owner together with someone else. And so I just started to be the architect. So I had to relate myself a lot to, to lines and structures and... I had to structure my life really uh, because I was partly like the entrepreneur and the architecture and uh, the architect and dealing with this whole building. It was like 1,800 square meters. And I my studio was the only space which was done. So I was working with paintings in there and then there was just construction working there. Uh, so I was starting to study Mies van der Rohe and uh, uh, all, you know all, 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 all the architects Alvar Alto and uh, started to investigate architecture so they became also more architecture I look at, when I see them now I think about architecture and I was reading about you know how they tried to find out how masses appear and you know the hadron collider where they where they shoot uh, atoms at each other and try to have these explosions and to create to create uh, masses and to create the the first explosion in the university and these wild ideas uh, to find the Higgs boson uh, and uh, all the the theories about what dark matter is, antimatter, the supersymmetry, all these kind of wild theories. So they really inspired me to to make this small series of paintings, which relate and deals with these um, matters, but in 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 a language that I created because I also worked with architecture. Role models. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have some role models, but uh, I don't think that none of them are uh, artists. I mean, my heroes, they, they're, they're not artists. Uh, I read a lot about Gandhi the last years. Uh, Gandhi is my hero. Uh, when it comes to life and how you deal with life and uh, if you are in a difficult situation that demands a lot from you in countering with, with other people, you should always read Gandhi. Um, many of my heroes are um, people who have been dealing with academic works for, for many, many, many years. And Johan Galtung is one of my uh, really favorite people on this planet. I think he's one of the wisest people in the, in, in, in the world 
alive. You should really check him out. Johan Galto, he's Norwegian. Uh, he was the first person in the world to establish a peace research institute in 1959. He was only 29 years old and uh, his, his thoughts about diplomacy is uh, it's so far beyond from how diplomacy works. Uh, he should be the Secretary General of the uh, United Nations, if you ask me. But uh, those are the kind of role models I, I really uh, strive to learn something from. But uh, of course there's many artists that I feel that I uh, really love their works like, and most of them are Germans actually uh, i feel very much related to the the germans way of thinking and approaching especially paintings all the way from if you go back to uh, to kaspar david friedrich and up to polka and richter and Earl and all the big big stars big thinkers the big artists <laughs> I went to Germany because uh, when, when I was young I was always told that all Germans were Nazis and they were the worst people in the world. So I went to Germany to experience the opposite and uh, I experienced the opposite. And I think it was, uh, to me, I became a political aware of uh, the history. Uh, when I moved to, to, to Germany, it made me into a thinker. It was very healthy for me to, to go to Germany. I did an exchange to Weissensee, the ac academy in the East. But I was a very bad student. I was almost never there. I remember the professor when I came there and I told him what I was into. He just said, well, you know, you should just enjoy Berlin. Uh, I don't think we can teach you anything in this academy. And uh, it was so strange because they were like making this... Uh, uh, nude model paintings and it was so old school <laughs> so I just uh, hang out in Kreuzberg in nine months and it was fantastic time talk to so many interesting people and learn a lot about Berlin and Germany and politics history philosophy German culture yeah. So it, was, so it was strange to see, you know, the, the, the wall, because I was looking at the wall from my house uh, in Warschaustrasse. And um, suddenly later working in, in a space where they were building a new wall. It was so strange. It was like looking at the shame, the, the, the wall of shame in, 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 uh, in Berlin. And then suddenly see that now the, the wall of shame is rising in the Middle East, in Jerusalem, but four times higher. Yeah, it doesn't seem to stop with the walls. No, now they're going to build one in uh, the Mexican border too. It's very very important. I think it's a it's a it's a it's a very important way of uh, thinking positive, 
and have some sort of a hope about we can contribute. You have to have that hope. So uh, uh, if we stop producing art, we the 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 humans will just we will go down because it's it's our way of believing that we can create something uh, larger than walls or barriers or war or we can create beauty. We we have so much hope in it. In, in ourselves and, and all our the, the, the cultures on this planet. So we have to have art and artists. Art is going to be the most important uh, driving force for the humans not to destroy this planet. I think audience, the audience should be, I, I hope that, you know, this is slow TV and uh, we are just talking about art and I'm sitting in this chair and uh, uh, I really love this kind of way of, of uh, it's like the anti uh, Facebook thing where everything is just you're just bombarded with information and the, the, and the subject should be presented in 15 seconds and have the synopsis like this and this is slow TV and, and I think people should watch more slow TV take your time and listen to conversations try to find out go under the surface and uh, the art is the place to be and the uh, art will be the more the most important place where you can uh, go in and try to understand and put the history of humans into a larger perspective. And uh, I hope that uh, people start to realize that before it's too late and uh, they should stop watching all the bullshit news and start to investigate a little bit more what, what is going on and, and, and listen to the good, good conversations and uh, investigate a little bit because it's it's a bombardment of of so much information in the world now so stop take time to to see the slow tv and uh, the good stories the good anecdotes and uh, what is going on in the human minds outside of the political box I hope I hope they they experience my work as both uh, interesting, intriguing, but but also that they can trigger something which is called beauty. If there is something that you can feel that is you, you enjoy it, because maybe it's you know in in uh, among my generation. It's almost like a taboo to say that something is beautiful and it shouldn't be like that. I really think that why not? Why can't art also be beautiful? Because it's, it's a lot of smart, out, smart art out there and uh, a little bit too much, I think, and a little bit too much fashion uh, of what is supposed to be smart art. And uh, if it can both be be uh, beautiful and smart then it's a good combination so i hope i'm both they can uh, follow my webpage or they can uh, follow my galleries Gallery Hawkins webpage. They can follow me on Instagram or they can follow me on Facebook. Uh, and uh, I try to update on what I'm doing uh, as often as I can. Mm -hmm.